Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. We have a great noon second law problem for you here. We have three blocks, two strings, uh, kind of a mixed pulley problem. We also have friction between the top block and the uh, tabletop that it's resting on. So uh, we have this arrangement of the blocks. The first question I have is let's draw the free body diagram. Question two, write down Newton's second law for each of those three blocks. And then we're simply going to solve. We want to find the acceleration of the system of the, each block. And we also want to find what is the tension in each of the two strings. Like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. It's the best way to support Physics Ninja. All right, let's get started. All right, first question, draw a free body diagram on each block. Well, let's start with the easy forces, the weight. The weight is a force that acts straight down and it's simply the mass of the block. In this case, it's block number one here, mass M1, multiplied by little g. That is the weight of this block. The weight of block number three is going to be straight down and it is M3 times little g. Again, it's a different mass. For block number two, guess what? Straight down again. M2 times little g. That's it for the weight. Now, what are some of the other forces acting on the blocks? Well, whenever there are strings involved, there should be tension. Now, if there's different strings, there should be different tensions. So we have to be a little bit careful with tension. Tension now, the way that you draw it, you look where it's connected to the block and you simply follow the string. Now, this is going to be string number one. It simply goes over that pulley. It's the same string. I'm gonna call this T1. What about block number two? It's the same string, and you look where it's connected to the block right here. Guess what? There has to be a force of tension acting on block number two. It's the same string. That means that the tension is uniform everywhere throughout this string. Um, it is in a different direction over here. That's because of this pulley, and that's okay. Now, what about the third block? The third block also is connected to a string. You go to the point of contact, there is also a tension. Now it's not necessarily the same as tension one because it is a different string. This one I call it T2. It's also connected up here to block number two. I call this the same tension T2. Here we are assuming we are neglecting anything to do with the pulleys. These are ideal pulleys. So they don't have, or they have a very small mass compared to the blocks. So we don't consider um, the forces acting on here, okay? We're not really interested in studying the dynamics of the pulleys. We're only interested in the three blocks. Uh, there are a couple other forces we can't forget about. What about the tabletop, right? The tabletop is exerting a normal force on this block. That tabletop is pushing up on the block with a force We'll simply call it N for the normal force. Now I've also told you that there is friction in this problem and the coefficient of friction is given here as 0.35. Now if I look at this, you know, even without having much physical intuition, you should still be able to guess that this object is going to slide, right? probably going to slide down over here. This one here is going to move up. And number two is going to move to the left in this figure. So that means that the friction always opposes the motion and it should be directed parallel to the surface. So I'm gonna call this F sub K. F sub K is my kinetic friction force. That is a force it happens when there are two surfaces sliding relative to each other. So I'll just call this kinetic uh, friction. Okay, so these are the free body diagrams for each block, okay? The suspended ones are pretty straightforward. Uh, the block on a tabletop has more forces acting on it. All right, part B now says write down Newton's second law for each block. So remember what Newton's second law says. You says you simply add up all the forces acting on any block. So there could be many terms over here, and that has to be equal to the mass of that block multiplied by the acceleration of that block. In this case, we have three blocks. Okay, so we have to write down Newton's second law for or three different times. So let's start with block number one. Okay. 
Now, before you write down Newton's second law, is you also have to remember that Newton's second law is a vector equation, okay? And vectors not only have a magnitude, but they also have direction. So what are you gonna do with a problem like this where you have forces up and down and you have forces on each side? How do you choose the up and down direction for all of this? So this is a tip that I'm going to give you, okay? First of all, you simply guess, okay? And so I'm gonna guess that this block here is going down. I'm gonna guess that if that happens, this guy here is going to go that way. And if that happens, this guy here is going to move up. And this is what I am going to call the positive direction for each block. This here is basically my coordinate system for each block. So this is very, very important, okay? Coordinate system if you're going to write down Newton's second law you have to define what are positive forces and what are negative forces so this is my selection now and now you're going to see how it's going to work out so let's start with block number one again I have just guessed that it's going to move down right and that is my coordinate system if I'm wrong it's okay as long as I'm consistent I can't have like one coordinate system pointing down this way and another one going that way because the blocks have to move together, okay? Uh, they're not, otherwise they're either getting closer together or they're gonna be getting farther apart and we don't want that. The distance between the blocks is always the length of that rope. So for block number one, this is what it looks like. Down is the positive direction, so we have the weight acting down. All right, what else? We have another force. We have the tension acting up. So the fact that it's acting up means that I'm gonna call that minus T1. That's it, these are the two forces acting on this block. That has to be equal to the mass of that block, M1, times the acceleration of that block. Now again, acceleration of each block is going to be the same. This is very, very important. So I only have really one acceleration here. Otherwise, the blocks are getting closer together or they're getting farther apart. So that's why I don't need another subscript over here for the letter one, uh, for the number one. I simply call them all the same acceleration. All right, what do I do now for the top block? Well, again, my coordinate system says that everything pointing to the left is the positive. So this is what it would look like. I'd have positive T1. What else? I have T2, but T2 is acting in the opposite direction. So I put a negative for that one. And I also have minus the force of kinetic friction acting on that block. That's all the forces I have in this horizontal direction for that block, so I'm all done. So that has to be equal to mass two multiplied by the acceleration of that block. Now for block number two, I also have the sum of the forces in this vertical direction. In this case, there's only two. So in that case, I have that the normal minus the weight m2g has to be equal to zero. There is no acceleration in this vertical direction for that block, which is why I set this side equal to zero. So here you determine that the normal is simply equal to m2 multiplied by little g, okay? So that equation stands alone. And we're gonna use this equation in just a minute when we go back to look at kinetic friction. Let's finish our Newton's second law for the third block now. For the third block, again, my coordinate system says that up is positive. So now I have T2 minus M3G, that's it, equals MA. Which mass? It's the mass of the third block multiplied by the acceleration of the third block. They all have the same acceleration. This is what Newton's second law looks like for each block. All right, the next problem says, find the acceleration of the blocks. And I only have one variable for acceleration, it's the letter A. It appears in all three equations. So it looks like you have a lot of work to do because you really have three unknowns in this problem. You have acceleration, you have the first tension T1 and the other tension T2. The weights you know. Uh, the other uh, force that appears here is the force of friction and I'm gonna show you that you're also gonna know that value. So this is a very, very important thing. I want you to look at these equations. And before we substitute the numbers, bear with me a minute. I wanna show you something. Look at in equation one, we have minus T1. Look at in equation two. In equation two, I actually have positive T1. 
Look what else I have in equation two. I have minus T2. In equation three, I actually have positive T2. Notice that the tensions in one equation are positive and the other one is negative, okay? So we're gonna use that fact to solve these equations. And this is really, really important, okay? It's gonna make the algebra a lot easy. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the three equations. And what, is, what that's going to do is it's going to eliminate the tensions, right? Because you have positive T1, negative T1. Positive T2, negative T2. So let's go ahead, add all three equations and show me what you get. This is what it looks like. So at the end, I'm going to have M1G. That's for this term. The T1s cancel out. Forget about that. The T2s are going to cancel out. What else? I'm going to have this term over here, minus M3 times little g. I'm also going to have minus the force of kinetic friction. That is everything I have on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, look what I have. There's no cancellations. All I have is M1 plus M2 plus M3. That's the total mass of the system. And again, I can factor out the acceleration, which is common, which is the same for all three blocks. So now all you have to do is simply divide through by the total mass, by M1 plus M2 plus M3. Let me go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to get rid of it over here. Let's simplify this side. I'm going to have acceleration by itself. And again, I'm just bringing the total mass M1 plus M2 plus M3 over on this side. Every term in here, I actually know. I just have to substitute the numbers. So let's go ahead and do that and finish this problem. And one last step, let's finish off this kinetic friction here. Kinetic friction, you might remember, is the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. And we're going to use the fact that the normal force has to be equal to the weight of block number two. So really, this guy is a mu k. And this is M2G for the normal force. So before I substitute the numbers, let me get rid of this FK and substitute in all these variables. This is mu K M2 multiplied by little g. Notice that little g is in all of the terms. What does that mean? It means I could factor it out. Let's get rid of it here. Let's get rid of it here. Let's get rid of it here and simply put it behind uh, this parentheses. All right, now I'm in the final position of substituting in all the numbers. So let's be very careful when we do this. Uh, M1 was 4 kilograms, 4.0, minus M3. M3 was 2 kilograms. Well, let's get rid of that. Uh, what else? Uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction was minus, uh, sorry, 0.35. And then we have the block of M2 that had a mass of one kilogram. Okay, that's everything here. At the bottom in the denominator, I have to simply add up all of these masses. 4.0 plus 2.0 plus 1.0. And then at the end, don't forget, I still have to multiply by a little g, which is 9.8. I put everything in the calculator. Uh, at the end, I got an acceleration, which was equal to 2.31 meters per second squared. Let me go ahead and box that up. That is my acceleration for this problem. Uh, the next problem says, oh, I'll find the tension now. Well, guess what I can do to find the tension? I can go back and look at any of these equations. I can look at the first one. I know what the acceleration is now. So the only unknown in equation one is tension T1. Uh, I can also use equation three. You can use any of the equations. I think using one and three is probably pretty straightforward because tension is the only unknown. In equation two, I have both tensions that appear, so I'm just not going to use that one, but I can. It doesn't matter. It's a system of three equations. So let's go on the next page, just finish this up, and find the tension in each of those strings. All right, we start with T1. Uh, for the tension T1, I'll use equation 1. I want to isolate T1. So if I bring it on one side and if I bring the M1A on the other side, I'll have it by itself. So my equation for uh, T1 looks like this. T1 has to be equal to M1G minus 
M1A. Again, I can factor out the mass M1, and then I'm left with G minus A here in this parenthesis. Uh, so all you have to do now is simply substitute in our values. The mass M1 was 4.0. Uh, little g is 9.8. And then minus 2.31 was the acceleration of each block. Uh, I substitute that in the calculator. I think I get 29.96 newtons, which clearly is approximately, uh, what do we get? Uh, say 30 newtons, close enough. All right, next one is T2. Well, T2, I'll use the last equation here, equation three. Again, if I want to isolate for T2, get it all by itself, I get T2. All I have to do is bring the weight here on the other side of the equation. So I'm left with M3A plus M3G. Okay, again, you could factor out the mass M3, and I'm left with A plus little g. Now we can substitute in our values. Uh, the values are for M3, I had two kilograms for the mass. Uh, the acceleration is still the 2.31 plus 9.8. So I'm left with T2, uh, again, keeping three figures here, 24.2 uh, newtons. So let's go ahead and box those up. So I get T1, 30 newtons and T2, 24.2 newtons. All right, that is how you find the tension in each string, I think. And again, I could have used equation two, I just chose not to, it's a little bit more algebra, but it, I would have got to the same answer. All right, that's it for me, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time.